Okay, everybody, here is our next one. We're going to talk about what can go wrong when we experiment, what we need to think about. And we're also going to talk about how we figure out if our results from an experiment are significant, and statistically significant, and, and what does that mean? And so the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, why do we need to control an experiment? When we have an experiment, why do we have a group that we do nothing to? Well, as we've seen, there can be a lot of random noise. There can be a lot of things that happen um, that we don't have control of in an experiment. And so we have the control, so we have something to compare against. We can say, hey, here's everything that we didn't give these people the medicine, and we did give these people the medicine, so the difference in them is what the medicine caused, is an example of an experiment, or, or the treatment caused, I guess would be a better better analogy is, is, you know, because we have our control group and we have our experimental group and we give the treatment to the experimental group. But one of the problems they ran into when they did this was that they wouldn't get the results they were thinking when they did this. And what they realized is that you need to have in the control group is a placebo a lot of times. Um, a placebo is a non-active drug or treatment that makes people think they're getting the treatment even if they are not. And this happened a lot like if you give someone Tylenol and they say, oh, my headache went away. And what you find is that if you give people a pill that has no medicine in it whatsoever, they'll be like, oh, I feel better. My headache's not gone, but it's better, so thank you for the medicine. And they didn't get anything. It's just that they believe they should feel better. And we'll explore the placebo effect uh, more in class, but the placebo effect is very real. So whenever we design an experiment, especially if we're asking people to give their responses instead of measuring it, you have to have a placebo so that people will give you an honest response. Um, and you know, the, uh, you can, little kids like, oh, my elbow hurts, my elbow hurts. And, and it doesn't hurt that bad. They just don't know how to manage the pain. So you, you know, you go, mm, give you a little kiss on the elbow. And they're like, thank you. And then they get under control. You didn't give them any medicine. It's all mental, but the placebo effect has a very, very real effect. And we'll look in class about, there was, they even did an experiment where they gave everybody placebos. And they lied to them about how much the placebos cost. And not only did everybody say they felt better, but people who were lied to and said that their placebo was more expensive said they felt better than the people who had received the fake cheap placebo. Um, last class, we talked about designing a caffeine experiment to see. Um, and so what we need to talk about is double blind, sorry. A double-blind experiment is an experiment n where not only does the patient not know if they're receiving the active drug, but the people evaluating them don't know <laughs> whether they're receiving the treatment. So why would you need a double-blind? Well, just like when people think that they feel better or something when they receive the placebo, Doctors who are trying to prove that their medicine works or someone who's trying to prove something via an experiment will oftentimes favor the results in such a way that they ascribe uh, effects that don't happen, especially in like psychological experiments, but the, in medical experiments it too. So a lot of times they do what's known as a double blind. And so what happens is, is that the person receiving the treatment doesn't know whether they receive the real drug or the placebo but also neither does the person that's evaluating them. Now, obviously, someone somewhere knows whether they're receiving it or not, but it's someone who's not doing the interaction with the, the subjects of the experiment. Um, they don't know whether they receive the active treatment or not. And that's what's known as a double blind, is neither the evaluator nor the person in it knows whether they've received the treatment or the placebo. So how do we prove that our experiment shows something? How do we know that it didn't just happen by random chance? 
Um, and so what we do is we want to see a difference so large that it's very unlikely to just happen by random variation. Um, and we can use the laws of probability, which we will learn in the upcoming units, to see whether something could possibly happen by chance. But basically, we call if something is very, very too un unlikely to have happened by random chance, we're going to use this phrase. We're going to call the results statistically significant. There is a very, very low chance that this could have happened by random. So how do we quantify that? Um, is Well, first, if you get a statistically significant result in an experiment. Remember, in an experiment, we administer the treatment. The only difference between our two groups, our control group and our treatment group, was the treatment that we imposed. So if there's a statistically significant result, there's a result that shows that the difference couldn't have happened by random chance, then we know that our treatment caused that result. And that's how we prove something in statistics. So it just, just is the big deal. is a statistically significant association in data from a well-designed experiment implies causation. And as a general rule of thumb, what we're going to say is if something has then a less than 5% chance of happening by random, it is considered statistically significant. And we'll talk in class about where this 5% comes from, but that's going to be our general rule of thumb. Sometimes, depending on um, what we're trying to prove, we may have higher or lower levels of significance. And you'll hear this, this 5% is going to be referred to as a p-value. We're not going to talk about that now, but that's the p-value is the chance that we could have gotten our result by pure random chance. And if that's less than 5%, then we're going to say it probably wasn't random. We're, we're, 90, we're pretty sure it wasn't random, and so it must be the result of our treatment. So that's it. This is a short video because mainly we're going to have to get our hands dirty and explore this to really understand and conceptualize it. I'll see you guys next class.